well, the two-tier codes and statement of practice have come in um, over essentially uh, the last decade. It's developed um, significantly. Essentially, what it is intended to do is to remove uh, differences in respect of pay, benefits and pensions uh, with regard to um, employees who have transferred across from a public sector employer to a private sector employer in an outsourcing situation and it's aimed at protecting the terms and conditions of those employees who've transferred and also the terms and conditions of those who are brought into the business as fresh employees after the transfer date. Looking at the statements of practice and the various codes of practice um, coming from the public sector, uh, there has been a lot of debate as to whether or not such codes are going to be uh, continuing in uh, the near future. Uh, it's been indicated that the codes may well be removed from as early as April of next year. Um, I understand there is going to be much uh, discussion in respect of these points over the coming months. Um, it's not surprising as it would be a way of reducing uh, costs uh, in, in the form of employee terms and conditions being deteriorated and it may well in fact make um, contracting out um, far less expensive um, in the long term for um, employers. You could well find that we have a system in which there are uh, different sections of a workforce um, earning different incomes, being uh, in receipt of different pension, uh, benefit entitlements and so forth in the long term. Um, a, a major step, I think, in respect of uh, opening up perhaps a freer market, but from an employee's rights perspective, uh, certainly it will be a detrimental change uh, for a number of employees in the work sector and those involved in public sector outsourcing. The understanding is that the codes may well be uh, removed from April 2011. There is discussion that there will be consultation over the coming months. Um, this is all taking place very, very quickly. It was only announced uh, last week uh, that this may be going ahead. And again, a lot of this is very much uh, at the rumour stage. Um, and we, we know very, very little else apart from uh, the indications are um, that we may be looking at a complete removal from as early as April 2011. From the employer side, um, employers, particularly in the private sector, who will now be bidding for contracts, may be considering, once we do have confirmation that the codes are going, they may well take the view that they price differently when uh, pitching and tendering for uh, such work. They may be of the view that they will be operating a two-tier workforce. They may be getting in employees um, to start with them after the transfer date. Um, on much lower terms than the public sector employees who transfer across to them. Uh, so we, we may well be finding overall that in respect of the pricing of such tenders uh, will go down, which will provide an increased benefit uh, for the public sector bodies which are outsourcing. Um, but again, as I mentioned, this will be to the detriment of employees who are being incorporated into the business if um, and on the understanding that they'd be working on lower terms and conditions and less pay. It's unlikely to result in uh, claims at the initial stages. Ultimately, you may well find that there are equal pay claims made, um, particularly if you have big disparities between um, the employees working on separate terms and conditions and on sec separate rates of pay. There's always that risk, which will hopefully dissuade some employers uh, from having a two-tier workforce. Um, but overall, uh, with that as an exception, um, it's very unlikely that uh, there'll be any form of other discriminatory reason which could be used to argue that the changes are unlawful and that having a two-tier workforce uh, is unlawful.